Hello, travelers, and welcome to Adventures in Security. Knowing about and addressing a critical vulnerability before a threat actor can use it is a crucial part of a security program. Once the vulnerability is known, assessing and managing the risk, as I discuss in the CBSS calculator video above, is not difficult if you understand your network and the associated controls framework. In this video, I walk through various ways to identify vulnerabilities across your systems, how to assess the risk. The second step in vulnerability management is in the CBS, CBSS video that just left the upper right. But don't worry, the link is also in the video description. I know you're probably tired of hearing this, but managing security is managing risk. Managing vulnerabilities helps ensure we reduce risk to levels acceptable to management and keep it there. However, we can't know where to look for vulnerabilities if we have a partial or out-of-date asset inventory or, as in some organizations, no inventory at all. There are three important categories of information we need to know when creating and managing vulnerability identification processes. The following questions are based on those found in the CISSP CBK reference listed in the bibliography, which is also in the video description. What servers and devices support business critical functions? Which hosts are accessible via the internet and therefore at greater risk of compromise? Where are databases and file repositories with classified information? And of course, all of these questions depend on your accurate identification of what business processes are critical. If you already have a working risk management process, you already have this information in network diagrams, system documentation, controls, framework diagrams, and matrices, and other tools, hopefully automated that are updated as part of a healthy change management program. If not, answering these questions is your first step. If you have to create an inventory or fix an outdated one, prioritize where you start. Work with business analysts and business management to identify and prioritize business processes. Once that's done, set up a project plan that identifies all system components, including existing safeguards, for each, each process, including servers, workstations, routers, switches, storage devices, IoT and IIoT devices, software, firmware, firewalls, both host and network-based, IPS and IDS, both host and network-based, anti-malware, log management processes, and behavior monitoring solutions, and what is actually monitored. If it can see or touch any part of one or more elements of a critical business processes supporting infrastructure, it goes on the list, or you remove its access. Security must work with data and system owners to classify and categorize all inventoried systems and network devices. Classification and categorization is used throughout the scanning and remediation processes for scheduling, and remediation prioritization. The video above covers the hows and whys of classification and categorization. It's crucial that you understand what safeguards are in place, how they're configured, and what they are intended to protect. This helps when assessing risk associated with discovered vulnerabilities and ensures that you manage the vulnerabilities in the safeguards themselves. Another consideration is understanding upstream dependencies. If a system listed as not critical feeds information to your critical system, its priority just went up. You can't wait until your complete inventory is complete before starting vulnerability hunting. Once you have all the system and safeguard inventories completed for a critical process, start looking. Organizations can identify vulnerabilities in three ways. First, 
Work with your vendors to understand when and how they announce new vulnerabilities. Someone in your, on your security team should check these sources daily. Vulnerability scans as part of change management and as part of regular vulnerability assessments. Vulnerability scanning solutions are continuously updated, and they can often identify a vulnerability you didn't yet know existed. And review new entries to the National Vulnerability Database daily. This is a good job for the same person who checks for vendor vulnerabilities. I had my on-call analyst do this as part of the morning checklist. Scanning for vulnerabilities, as I mentioned earlier, should happen in multiple places in a system's lifecycle. First, all new system components should be scanned prior to implementation. When combined with configuration reviews, pre-implementation scanning enables security to identify vulnerabilities, assess risk, and recommend steps for remediation, if necessary, before the system goes into production. Security should scan systems in production based on the criticality of the business processes supported and the data involved. When systems and data are properly classified and categorized, it is much easier to work with data owners, system owners, and internal compliance teams to ensure scans are done with the proper frequency. When scheduling scans on production systems and network devices, security must consider possible hits on network and system performance. For example, scanning the payroll server during payroll processing will likely have someone in security removed from the payroll. It's best to scan during non-business hours, but this is not always possible. When necessary, work with the system process owner to determine a window with the least impact on business operation. Also, most solutions allow adjusting how much is thrown at a scan device. By slowing down the scan process and ensuring low use time scans, Vulnerability scanning should be relatively painless. Credentialed scans enable the scanning solution to authenticate for access to files and other artifacts on the target systems. Non-credentialed scans block access to anything an unauthenticated person could not see. Credentialed scanning is preferred. It enables far more than just cursory scans, like open ports. According to the CISSP CBK reference, credential scanning enables reduced traffic because fewer packets are sent to identify vulnerabilities, and checking file versions to determine patch levels and associated vulnerabilities. When scanning, the scanner might have to send traffic through switches, routers, firewalls, IPS, and other devices that might restrict traffic. It's important to understand this and take steps to ensure that all the needed scanning traffic reaches the target devices. Another reason to have good network diagrams. Once scanning is complete, the discovered vulnerabilities must be efficiently managed. Again, this is covered in the CBSS calculator video at the link in the video description. That's it for this video. If you have questions, please ask. And if this information was helpful, please subscribe. And until next time, be careful what you click.